Striving for dignity, peace and harmony in society has been a long struggle for Uganda. Uganda is a country of diverse cultures and beliefs. This diversity in itself is a human rights challenge. Indeed, Uganda has seen its fair share of turbulent times. During the period from 1966 to 1986, Uganda was characterized by political instability, civil strife, which resulted into human rights violations, arbitrary arrests, detention without trial, torture, killings and forced disappearances, commonly known as Pandagari, were the order of the day. Most of these atrocities were state-inspired. It was a sad chapter in Uganda's history. In 1986, the National Resistance Army government, led by President Yuri Museveni, came to power. It started on the road to recovery. Nobody should think that what is happening today, or what has, ha what has been happening in the last few days, is a mere change of guards. This is not a mere change of guards. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. Uganda began a campaign to rebuild itself into a state with policies that favor the respect of rule of law, democracy, access to justice, and in general, a country that values the promotion and protection of fundamental human rights. Simply put, fundamental human rights are those rights that accrue to you by the fact that you are a human being. The word fundamental means that these rights are inherent to all human beings and basic and essential for the individual. Protecting and observing these rights was a consensus of all Ugandans. In a bid to bring back the rule of law and respect for human rights, an ad hoc commission known as the Commission of Inquiry into Violations of Human Rights, the Odair Commission, headed by Justice Arthur Odair, was set up. Its mandate was to investigate human rights violations that took place in Uganda from independence to 1986. In one of its recommendations, the Odeo Commission recommended for the establishment of a permanent human rights institution that would monitor the human rights situation in the country. In 1995, Uganda Human Rights Commission was birthed by the 1995 Constitution of Uganda. The establishment of an autonomous National Human Rights Commission by the Government of Uganda reflected its commitment to effective implementation of human rights provisions under the Constitution and the regional and international human rights instruments. The Uganda Human Rights Commission was the first of its kind in Uganda and still is. The Uganda Human Rights Commission has a wide range of functions and powers. These were bestowed on it by Articles 52 and 53 of the Constitution and the Uganda Human Rights Act of 1997. It was established to protect and promote human rights and freedoms in Uganda. The Commission can inquire into the actions of any person and institution against whom a complaint has been registered for violation of human rights. We, we, we want to, 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 to call upon Ugandans to, to, to come to the Commission. Our services are free. We've installed the through Jeros, uh, total of free lines, and we, we urge the public to use us uh, because we, we can reach many places. So let the public you know they are right, let them utilize us. The responsibility entrusted to the Commission under the Constitution cannot be adequately fulfilled without close ties with partners. The, the, the Human Rights Commission Act requires us to work closely with civil society organizations. So we work closely with civil society organizations. Above all, 
The constitution requires that the commission works closely with parliament. There is a committee in parliament, the Human Rights Committee, to which we report. Um, but we also report directly to the speaker. The commission is independent. And because it's independent, it does not report to any ministry. Our funds are appropriated directly from parliament. The constitution provides for the independence of the commission, meaning that it executes its mandate without influence or direction from anyone as stipulated in Article 54. For example, uh, issue our annual reports and uh, those, that annual report contains our views on certain agencies of government as far as observance of human rights is concerned. Now, if we were not independent, we would not be as explicit and as open and as forthright as we would want to be. The functions of the Commission include investigating complaints of human rights violations, conducting tribunals, inspecting places of detention, conducting civic education, conducting research on human rights issues, compiling annual human rights reports and periodic reports, monitoring government's compliance with international treaty obligations on human rights, and review of bills before Parliament. Uganda Human Rights Commission has also been instrumental in training the staff of other national human rights commissions in Africa. In fact, as a matter of fact, in I think two years ago, three years ago, 2012, I think it was, we, we, go, we were given the best, uh, the award of the best human rights commission in Africa when we were in Yamasukuru, in Cote d'Ivoire, or what we call Ivory Coast. Structure of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. At the helm of the commission is the chairperson. He steers the commission together with six other commissioners. Currently, the chairperson of the commission is Mr. Medikagwa. The commission also has a secretary, Mr. Gordon Moesije, who's responsible for carrying out policy decisions of the commission, the day-to-day -day administration and management of the affairs of the commission, among other duties. The commission performs its work through five directorates, situated at the commission's head office at Twed Plaza, Plot 22 Lumumba Avenue, in Kampala. The directorates include the Directorate of Finance and Administration, the Directorate of Regional Services, the Directorate of Research, Education and Documentation, the Directorate of Monitoring and Inspections, and the Directorate of Complaints, Investigations and Legal Services. All these directorates are hinged onto the main functions of the Commission and provide administration, functional directions, guidelines and technical backstopping to the regional establishments. Directorate of Finance and Administration. Uh, support and administration is quite big. It takes on day-to-day -day operations of the, of the head office, day-to-day uh, -day operations of the um, 10 regional offices, as well as day-to-day -day operations of the 10 field offices. Uganda Human Rights Commission is primarily funded by the government. However, the Commission also gets funding from development partners. The biggest hindrance of the Commission is inadequate funding to execute its core mandate. Because if we had that uh, adequate allocation, we'd still actually be having a robust structure. Probably you'd go to whichever part of the country and find human I mean, uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission. The Directorate of Research, Education and Documentation The constitutional mandate of human rights research, education and documentation of the Commission is performed under this directorate. Conducting research on human rights issues. Under this directorate, the Commission conducts research and prepares reports on emerging human rights issues. The issues for research are informed by the types of complaints received at the Commission and prevalent issues that have an impact on the enjoyment of human rights. Research findings inform action that influences policy formulation and decision-making concerning human rights issues. Once research has been done, it provides uh, a platform for evidence-based advocacy. Conducting civic education 
on human rights. Human rights education is probably the heart of the Commission's mandate. Civic education enables active, effective and meaningful participation of the citizenry in matters of their governance. It enables the citizens to make informed decisions and hold their leaders accountable in ensuring that human rights are protected and promoted. Furthermore, civic education is intended to inform the citizens of Uganda about their duties and responsibilities. The Commission conducts human rights training seminars and workshops for law enforcement officials, security agencies, government officials and civil society organizations. Furthermore, the Commission conducts community meetings, also known as barazas, whereby grassroots communities are engaged in issues of human rights and civic duties. You have to know about human rights in, for, in order for you to be able to claim your right. Then for the duty bearers, and these are the government officials, these are the health workers, we conduct human rights education for these particular groups of people so that they can know what their roles and duties are in as far as facilitating the process of enjoyment of human rights is concerned. The Commission focuses its energies on reaching grassroots communities. This forms the bulk of its work. Uh, grassroots communities are a, a fertile area for human rights violations. So when you engage grassroots communities, and uh, empower them with information on rights, on duties and responsibilities, then you are sure to get action in as far as reporting cases of human rights violations is concerned, but also in ensuring that human rights are not violated in communities. With the recent acquisition of civic education vans, the education program of the Commission is poised to become even more robust. We acquired two new civic education vans to conduct what we call village road shows. So what happens is that we move from uh, village to village or trading center to trading center, talking about engaging people on issues of human rights, issues of governance. But what difference does it make is that it is visual. We use uh, films, we use documentary, we use dramas, so that we can engage the people that we are with at that particular point in time. We would want to see many, many more Ugandans understand their rights. You cannot claim a right unless you know it. Uh, we need to, to do a lot of civic education to make the people know their rights so that they can apply them and can use their rights to demand of government accountability and various things. Our Human Rights Commission, the Robert Tuse Konga Baso Mesa, but we have been divided to Maniku Demberi Ubuntu, Nga, Wawo Inzo Kudukiranga Baku Nigiriza, Nga, O Inza Kubasa Angawa, to take the Ngerichi Genuzo Polamu, Okita Moku Wanida, Gaba Nigiriza, Echila Langak Saba Government, a young Gedeem is some of Wedi Timuvialo, Avantu Aba Uli Levi Uli Red, you never be about TV. Basobole Okfuna, I at least the contacts Waji Bainzo Kukiranga Banigidizidua. Chiranja Kube Baza, Olom Limogu Bakoze, and T. Bachikoze Mungeri is simple, Basobo Dok Tamblako, around the market, Basobo Dok Gabo Popula, Basobo de Noku Gabati Shat, Edi, Avant Beboke de Konaba. The Commission has ring fenced the youth as a special demographic group for human rights education. Schools are particularly targeted. The Commission has established school human rights peace clubs, which clubs are meant to nurture human rights activism in schools. They do various activities, they are involved in um, drama groups, they are involved in debates, they go out into their communities to talk about human rights, they do radio talk shows, they visit prisons. So by this you are creating actors of change among the youth to drive the human rights message forward. The Commission developed human rights readers for primary schools to be used from primary 1 to 7. In collaboration with its civil society organization partners, the Commission worked with the National Curriculum Development Center to include human rights in the new curriculum for secondary schools. The Commission has also developed and disseminated education and communication materials targeting different audiences. We develop materials um, 
with uh, thematic human rights issues, posters, uh, brochures, handbooks, uh, we do billboards, we do documentaries so that we package our human rights message appropriately depending on the target group we are focusing on. Documentation of human rights materials. At the Commission, documentation is about warehousing publications and materials about human rights. It's a depository of uh, human rights literature, human rights papers, uh, in one place. We have libraries. We have a library here at the head office. We have libraries in our 10 regional offices so that we uh, facilitate the public's access to information when it comes to human rights. The Directorate of Complaints, Investigations and Legal Services. This directorate performs the constitutional mandate of receiving and investigating complaints of violations of rights and freedoms. The Directorate can also initiate its own investigations. The Directorate also offers legal services to the Commission and to those who have suffered human rights abuses. Who may complain? The victim of an alleged human rights violation. A relative, friend, legal representative, etc. may make the complaint on behalf of the alleged victim if the victim cannot personally make the complaint. Any individual organization alleging with facts a series of massive violations of human rights or people's rights. Any person may complain before the Commission, not only on his or her own behalf, but also on behalf of others who are also similarly affected by the act he or she is complaining about. Any person authorized by the victim. If the Commission feels that the matter merits its attention, appropriate action is taken. We can do uh, so many things. One, we can mediate, because some, some cases uh, uh, demand urgent attention. Yeah, issues of um, family disputes, issues of children.